Well, my name is Dr. PJ Devereaux. I'm a cardiologist and a perioperative care physician. I'm the director of the Division of Perioperative Care at McMaster University, and I'm a senior scientist at the Population Health Research Institute. The title of my talk was Transemic Acid in Patients Undergoing Non-Cardiac Surgery. Well, um, globally, there's 300 million adults who have major surgery on an annual basis, so there's a lot of people having surgery. And bleeding is a common complication after surgery, and it is associated with lots of morbidity and mortality. Tranexamic acid is a drug that's been around for a long time, and it may safely decrease major bleeding in patients having non-cardiac surgery. So we undertook a trial to inform whether or not tranexamic acid was effective and safe in people having non-cardiac surgery. This was a randomized controlled trial. We also used a partial factorial design. So everyone was randomized to tranexamic acid or placebo, but patients who were also on an antihypertensive medication went into a partial factorial design and were randomized to a hypotension versus a hypertension avoidance strategy. Those results we reported separately at the ACC. Um, and we included patients who are age 45 or greater undergoing inpatient non-cardiac surgery and were deemed to be at risk of bleeding and a vascular event. In the trial, we demonstrated that tranexamic acid worked. It prevented the primary composite of life-threatening major and critical organ bleeding. It reduced that by essentially 25% in relative terms, a result that was highly statistically significant with a p-value less than 0 0.0001. On the safety side of it, tranexamic acid, which is an antifibrinolytic drug, um, we wanted to make sure that it was safe, didn't cause vascular thrombotic complications. So for our primary safety endpoint, which is vascular complications, that occurred in 649 patients in the tranexamic acid group and 639 patients in the placebo group for a hazard ratio of 1.023 um, and a result that's not statistically significant. The upper boundary of the confidence interval did surpass our non-inferiority margin. P-value ended up being 0 0.04. Um, however, when you look at the results of the data, it shows that there's a 96% probability that we are below our non-inferiority um, safety margin. And overall, there's really no separation. Less than, despite just under 1,300 events, there's only a difference of 10 events between the two groups on safety. There's an unequivocal benefit if you take transamic acid for all comers age 45 or greater, having in-hospital non-cardiac surgery. You reduce the risk of life-threatening major and critical organ bleeding by 2.7%, a result that was highly significant. And people will have to offset that by a low probability of any increase in the risk, of a small increase in the risk of actually a complication, which was like in our study 0.3%, but again, it was a result that was not significant. In a global context, it's important because globally, we're short about 30 million units of blood for transfusions globally on an annual basis. Surgery accounts for 40% of all transfusions. So based upon the POIS-3 results, if tranexamic acid was made, a standard of practice, we could prevent about 8 million transfusions required on an annual basis, which highlights the potential for very important public health and clinical benefit. So there's currently a trial undergoing right now, which is looking at patients who are getting um, hepatic surgery. Um, in our group, Andre Lamy is leading us in a big trial in cardiac surgery. In cardiac surgery, tranexamic acid is already a standard of care but we're doing a large trial where we're randomizing patients to topical tranexamic acid versus IV formulation of tranexamic acid to see whether or not, in fact, that is safer in the cardiac surgery setting. In the cardiac surgery setting, they use much higher doses than we use. We use two grams for our intervention. In the cardiac surgery, they're commonly using four to five grams. And in that setting with higher doses, seizure is a side effect. And so we're seeing if we give topical, can we actually drive down because there's not much systemic absorption? Can we prevent the bleeding and actually create greater safety? So there's other ongoing trials that will offer some important insights. We hopefully will have our economic analysis coming out from POIS3, which offers some very important insights also.